Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to another Blood Splattered Vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And we just got done watching Gerald's Game, the latest Stephen King adaptation that went straight to Netflix. Which is apparently yep. the new straight to video, but way better. <laughs> yes, way better than the, the, the old. Well, it's like the original straight to video before it well, became the, like The original ass. and the mid 2000s straight to video when like straight to video was actually a good thing. Yeah, yeah. When it actually, <laughs> there was some quality behind it. When you yeah. knew that like, oh, like all the good stuff they couldn't show you on tv or anything else it's now going to be on the straight to video version you know yep um yeah there was a lot of great straight to video horror movies in the mid 2000s the, the 90s not so much the 90s had a lot of Ooh, shitty ones pretty bad the only straight to video ones in the 90s that were good were foreign films films yeah. from other countries yeah that Technically had theatrical releases, just not here. Well, yeah, that and um, like Maniac Cop Two, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, Maniac Cop Two is great. Yeah, that was a directed that was a directed video movie. But the Hellraiser really sequels, good. man. Oh, oh, they're so bad. Oh, so but that's bad. not that's not that's Gerald's like, game. Gerald's game is <laughs> all right. So Gerald's game is an adaptation of a kind of mid tier Stephen King book, not one of his worst, yeah. but not one of his best. Adapted by a phenomenal director, Mac, Ma Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan. Yeah. Mike Flanagan, the director of Hush and Absentia, Absentia. Yeah. which are two phenomenal and horror Oculus. films. And Oculus. Yeah. Three phenomenal horror films, all vastly different from one another. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think um, Absentia is probably my favorite. Oh, so Absentia is great. Yeah. Like, well, the, the main thing that Mike Flanagan, he, he does have a theme that he does, mm -hmm. which is the senses. Yes, yes, you know, it does whether, mess with senses. Yeah, it's like this, your sense of sight, your mm -hmm. sense of sound, your sense of... Absentia was great because that was sense of reality. True. Holy fucking crap. And I so is this movie. one to a certain extent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very much so. This that's why when that's why when they were like, we're going to adapt Gerald's game, I'm like, oh. And then they were like, it's going to be Mike Flanagan. I'm like, oh. Yeah. And, 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 and not to bring the cat completely out of the bag, but this movie is great. Yeah, it's real super good. Like, they, he took one of the mid-tier Stephen King books and made a pretty A-tier movie out of it. Yeah, they did. <laughs> um, like, they did. Like, like, I have a few minor complaints, but overall, this movie's phenomenal. It's tense. It's, it's fucked up. And it's a surprisingly... <laughs> true adaptation of the book oh god yeah they, they keep most of the important things in and they don't change too much and most of the changes are really con condensing yeah yeah they condense some things that are like well you could have said it, one of those if king was to go back and reread it like yeah. gerald's game would probably lose about 50 pages you know or it's you stuff know? that would be really difficult to portray on screen in a way that wouldn't be utterly ridiculous yeah yeah um, like <laughs> Which is like, for instance... There's like, a dog in the movie, and in the book, the dog is given... Because the character's going crazy in the book, uh, she starts to imagine the dog saying things. And had they actually done that in the movie, I think it would have been hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I don't think been, it would have been scary. <laughs> no, no. That would have been like, that would have been like actually giving Cujo a voiceover yeah, exactly. in the movie version. Well, I think just leaving it in this movie to having the dog just act like a dog worked. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, basically, the basic plot of this movie is a couple goes out to have, like, that... A night of sex that's supposed to revitalize their relationship. It's like, oh, now we're going to go all out. Our relationship's on the rock, so we're going to whip out the chains and whips and shit. Yeah. You know, we're going to do the BDSM thing, because we've never done that before. Try to spice up our love life. But it goes horribly wrong in a way I will explain in the spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> but characters start to go crazy. <laughs> yeah. The, the thing that is the premise is that in the middle of the act, Gerald keels over while mm -hmm. she is still handcuffed to the bed. Yeah. And she is in the middle of nowhere yeah. and she has got to escape. And But she's handcuffed to the bed and she can't it, Yeah, yeah, she, she can out. barely move. Yeah. And so she has to figure out how she's going to get out. That's the plot. It, it it's a basic like person trapped in a scenario story like a buried or yeah. like the original saw. Yep. Or anything like that. But the twist on this one is is that she essentially starts to go crazy. And yeah. while she's going crazy, she starts talking to versions of herself. Um, and having this whole monologue about herself and about how she got there and about why she will always end up there and all these other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her it's... relationship to men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It becomes a gigantic psychodrama. Absolutely. And it's a really and, good one. And basically this whole movie is her in that on that bed... With all those voices, 
for two hours. <laughs> yep. One of the things I got to say is that up till the point where the movie does the thing it's doing. Yeah. Um, it was actually a very accurate portrayal mm -hmm. of how those sorts of scenes actually start. No, oh, like, 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 like how, like, uh, um, yeah, the Dom sub relationship, yes. and how it kind of begins. It's not, it because it's not, well, like, I was sitting there notice. going like, like, oh man, I've been here. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like, not necessarily the whole relationship on the rocks part. That requires me to be in a long relationship yeah, that reaches yeah. that point. You know yeah, it requires you to be but a long relationship. That part where you start, where you start that for the first time, yeah. where you first experiment with it. Yeah, they pretty much nailed it. Yeah, that. they nailed it. They nailed it. How uncomfortable it is. Oh, how God. Also how irritating. awkward it is when it turns out one of you isn't into it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was actually kind of surprised at how little judgment the movie had towards yeah. Gerald. Yeah, the, the movie the movie the movie is oddly like even though it goes into many reasons why both Gerald and his wife are not necessarily great people. Yeah. Um, like all good Stephen King adaptations, there's a whole lot of gray. It yep. the movie itself did not judge them. No. The characters no. judge each other. Yeah. But the movie did not judge them. No, it didn't. That was that was really good. And I like that. I like that. I like a movie that allows you as the audience members to decide for yourself how you feel about the characters as opposed to making you feel a certain Yeah, way. and that's why I was really excited by the fact that Mike Flanagan was doing yes. that because he's a fucking expert at that. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. Super phenomenal. And just like, oh man, the other thing he's really good at is there's just these little tense moments that have you at the edge of your seat for really reels. Like, there's a whole scene where she's trying to get a glass of water. It's because she's been on the bed for like a day and yeah, she's, she's, she's starting to die of thirst yeah she's having dehydration problems and she's trying to get this fucking cup of water that that her husband had left there because oh, man, he the was de take... <laughs> dehydration yeah. makeup effects were yes. great like they even got that they, her lips are all cracked yeah. and they stick together oh and man it's a it's whole a scene job. of her trying to get this cup of water in a place where she can't quite reach it and like that scene, like man, my butt was clenched the whole guy. Yeah, yeah, time. yeah. That, was, that scene had a pucker factor too. <laughs> you know, I was like, like oh. this is just a girl reaching for a cup of water, but I am so invested. Yeah, yeah. And I am so freaking out right now. And oh my god, this is suspense in its purest form. It was like pure suspense. Yeah. This is how you know Mike Flanagan is gonna go, gonna go on to be one of the greatest horror directors of all time if he keeps this up, is because like he turned a scene about grabbing a cup of water into one of the most intense scenes I saw all year. Yeah, I mean he's <laughs> never had a movie with like this level of budget. Could you imagine him directing a Saw movie? Oh my god, if he was given like a huge budget, I, I would I would love to see it. Oh god, yeah. You know, like he he normally works in these little small contained stories and maybe he should stay there. Yeah, but, maybe. But, but if maybe. he wants to branch out, I would totally see it. Like Oculus was the highest budget he had. It was, and that one was only like what, 10 mil? I have no idea the exact budget, but I know it was yeah, bigger it was than this really one. Really low because it was still it still had that kind of <laughs> It had to be bigger than this setting. one. This yeah, one's yeah. basically one room. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> one room movie basically. Which um, I love those kinds of movies. Yeah, I love those like hey, let's just yeah. put some people in this small scenario and just watch it play out. <laughs> yeah, they're only like one one two they're only like four locations in this movie total. Overall, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, up until the end, and at the end, there's like like three different locations at once, but they're all like really quick. Well, yeah, but those are like pickup <laughs> shots, you know. You know? Um, but yeah, I damn. And the other thing about this movie, like before we get to the spoilers, is that the two leads in this movie are phenomenal. Oh, yes, they take characters that in the book I was only marginally invested in, and make me thoroughly invested in them, um, just through their performance alone. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because. Overall, the characters are the same. Yeah. But the way they're performed, the way the actors interact with each other, the, the chemistry they have, as well as the lack of chemistry they have in certain areas, it's palpable, you know? And, like, like, oh, God, like... Yeah, you totally buy that this is a couple... This movie would have fallen relation. apart if they had the wrong actors. Oh, yeah. This movie would have completely collapsed without yeah. it. Because the whole movie rests on them. Yeah, yeah. And, it, like, the guy, the guy, the woman that played... Uh, Je uh, it's Jessica, right? I can't remember her name. Oh, god damn it! The lead, the lead female. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> lead, lead female. I'm pretty sure her name is Jessica. I'm just gonna go with husband and wife. For husband now. and wife. All right, the <laughs> woman who plays the wife, she does a perfect job. It's really weird because in the beginning, she comes off as a little bit of a frigid bitch, not like super not, bad, not, not like, but 
not like a bitch, more like someone who's like um she's frigid, but more yeah. like like someone who's a little too um defensive. Defensive, a little too proper. But she's yeah. nice. Like she's yeah, yeah, that yeah. dog. She's, yeah, she's Which nice. Which is person. why I wouldn't call her a flat out bitch. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she comes off but she comes off as a person with a lot of like intimacy issues, despite yeah. the fact that she's in this marriage. Yeah. And yeah. they're 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 aspects to her performance that you're like at in the beginning you're like wow like there's she's subtle not, touches i know they're super subtle they're super subtle yeah. touches but they make sense as the movie goes on yeah yeah because you're like <laughs> there's just some weird things that she's doing that are super yeah. subtle and you're just sort of like geez me being married to you is probably miserable and you realize that that is actually mm-hmm. on purpose yeah that's totally on purpose the character is not unlikable yeah the character's not unlikable. The character is supposed to be unlikable in this moment. Yeah, yeah. You know? And as the movie wears, goes on, you're just sort of like, oh, man, no, it, it all paid off. It's mm-hmm. all paid off. Everything pays off. Everything. Yeah. Everything comes this together. Is, this is a... Re- and, and here's the I mean, other this thing. This is an actor's movie. Here's another thing. But before we get to the spoilers, there's a point where this movie goes off the fucking rails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it oh, works. Yeah. It works, in my opinion, better than the movie than it did when I first read it in the book. <laughs> I, I think I know what movie you're talking about. Because when it happens in the book, you're like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> you know, like... Do we want to go? Do we want to go into spoilers? This yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, full on. I highly recommend this movie. Obviously, it's a Netflix original movie. It's available on Netflix. There is going to be no Amazon affiliate link for this movie. Um, I might include something in the description below, but whatever. Yes, there's a dog in this movie. No, the dog is not killed. So, <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's a that's a deal breaker for you. Don't worry, dog doesn't die. Dog doesn't die. And with that said, let us move on to the spoilers. <laughs> The dog does eat someone, though. Yes, the dog totally <laughs> fucking eats someone. The funny, the funny thing is, is in the beginning of the movie, knowing some of the crazy shit that happens with the dog in the novel, and how big of a deal they made of the dog, I found myself going, "Oh my god, are they gonna do it? <laughs> are they gonna do it?" Because they set up the dog right away. Yeah, they but did. But the dog is the thing they toned down the most from the book, simply it because is. a lot of the stuff in the book, I don't think it would have translated very well. No, like like you... having the dog actually in her head talk to her i don't know if it would have worked at best it would have come across like one of those like ridiculous kids movies where the mouth moves or it would have come across like twilight where it's like yeah <laughs> you know yeah and the the, the only thing I, I can see how you could have done it but it would have been so fucking complicated if you managed to pull it off in a way that was similar to like the wolf in Never Ending Story, then okay. Yeah. If you were able to do it yeah. on that level and still make it work, then rock on. Yeah, yeah, because the only other way to film that is to have the voiceover without actually having the dog physically move its mouth, which you could do. The problem is is that it makes things a little too unreal. Yeah. And you have to be skirting that line between... Is this in her head and what's actually going on? The other thing is that the dog in the book, when it speaks, it's not like in that, like, I am over here in this corner saying creepy things in the dark. It's more like, hey, bitch, what are you doing over there? I'm going to eat this guy. That's right. Fucking fuck off. Yeah, yeah. That's the way the dog talks. Like, it's like. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. He's like an asshole, you know? (laughs) So it would have been, it would have come off as a little bit more funny, which I think in the book works, but I don't think it would have worked. Either. I don't. I, I think it would have taken away from this movie, even though this movie has funny moments. Yeah, I feel like that level of comedy might not have fit tonally. Correct. At least with the tone that Mike had had set up in this film. Yeah, like it, much like how the comedy in oh god, what was that? What's that one fucking in? It's not the mist. It wasn't Night Flyer. God fucking okay. It's a king adaptation. Damn it, king adaptation. Not thinner. Thinner. Salem's Lot. Salem's. Okay, got it. Yeah, the comedy in Salem's Lot is intentional. (laughs) Yeah, and it works in both the book and the movie. But when you're reading Gerald's Game, you're like, I don't know if that would work. Well, the the other thing I also like that that he kind of changes is that in the book, she sees a lot of things. And oh, her yeah. hallucinations. And a lot of things talk to her, and a lot of things pop up, and a lot of it's weird as fuck. And they could have done that in this movie, but in this movie they kind of stuck it to three things. Yeah. A uh, hallucination of herself mm-hmm. uh, talking to her, her inner voice. A hallucination of her inner voice's interpretation of what her husband would say. Yeah. So her her vision of her husband's there, as well as her 
the reality of what she thinks her husband is. Yeah. So it's still not quite her husband, but it's what she thinks he was to her as well as what she thinks he was underneath it all. Like what she, what he hid from her. Um, and then the third thing is creepy death monster guy. Yeah. Who shows up with like a collection of items and like she is convinced is the spirit of death and she has to give him something. Otherwise he will take her away. And, that is the one, the one thing that I was surprised they kept from the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I think that the book he's called the Spaceman or something like. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. If I'm remembering correctly, I think in this one they call him Mr. Moonlight. Yeah, Mr. Moonlight, and I like that. Yeah. Though I think both both in the book or whatever, she has that like, oh, you're made of moonlight thing that she says yeah. to him. But like, yeah, Mr. Moonlight, because I think if she started calling him Spaceman, it'd be hilarious. Well, that would have been a little too funny. <laughs> yeah. But like, they kept it to those three things, and as a result, you had like this inner drama between her, the the wife and the husband, her hallucinations of them throughout most of the story, arguing with her. And I felt like I feel like those three that that trifecta, yeah, worked really well. And if they had added all the other voices on top of it, it would have been way too much. Yeah, yeah, because we already got, like, four things we're dealing with. We're mm-hmm. dealing with the dog, we're dealing mm-hmm. with her inner voice, mm-hmm. we're dealing with her interpretation of her husband, and we're dealing with Mr. Moonlight. And it also allowed the movie to focus on one basic theme, and that is this character's relationship to men. Yes. and Which is what this whole sto- movie's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie's all about that. The The, the book wanders a bit more. Yeah, the, the, it's a Stephen King book. Yeah. He, he takes, he goes in weird places. Yeah. He puts in connections from other stories like Dolores Claiborne and shit yeah. like that. I was actually really surprised <laughs> they kept the reference to Dolores yeah, Claiborne. they did keep the reference in. They yeah. did do that. Like, I, I was like, oh, I, they're going to throw that out because that goes nowhere. But no, they put it in and I'm like, oh. This movie felt a lot more focused and even like the final line at the end yeah. of this movie, which is not in the book. It's a different thing in the book. But the final line in this movie is one of those additions, kind of like the final line in Shutter Island, where you're just yeah. like, oh, man, that should have been there. Yeah, it, that, that should have been, been there from the get-go. Yeah. Because that just completely, okay, this is what the story is about right here. Her facing the the demonic male in her head and saying, you're not that That's scary. scary. Or, or I think what she says is that you're small. You smaller, look so much smaller, smaller now. That. Yeah. yeah. More, so much smaller than I remember. That's what the story is about. It's her confronting that demon. That demon of her father who sexually assaulted Sexually molested her. her. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those weird scenarios where even in the movie they acknowledge it. Where it's like, well, technically he didn't rape you. He just jerked off near you. But like, it's still... Yeah, but it's still very <laughs> obviously bad. Yeah, it still still left a fucking scar. Yeah, and but like, he is undoubtedly massively emotionally manipulative. And this entire movie and this entire story is about her dealing with the fact that the demon of her father has haunted her her entire fucking life in one way or another... In the men she dates, in the husband she married, in why her relationship isn't working with her husband, yeah. and uh, also in this creepy thing that is standing in the corner and asking her for things. And and so, like, having that that final line at the end of the movie where it's like, you're so much smaller than I remember. Like, there, that, that focused this entire yeah. story right there. Yeah, it made every, put everything together. It it's really one of those cool. things where, like, the, whoever wrote this script... Gave it a better ending than King did. Um, even though the, basically the same thing happens, with the exception of, I think, in the book, they go a little bit more into what happens to the dog. I don't think the bot dog makes it out in the, in the book. Uh, I can't remember if it lives in the I, book. I seem to remember, like, the, like, the final few, like, the final chapter. You have that moment where she goes in, the guy's being taken in to jail. He does the whole, like, oh, like... Like, yeah. you're, you're the girl made of moonlight, yada, yada, yada. And, and then she spits in his face. But then I remember them also going into, like, like oh, yeah, also the, the dog was put down. Like, I remember them yeah, like, having yeah, this whole like that. Yeah. segment about that. Yeah. So, yeah, it turns out Mr. Moonlight is real. Yes. That is the point that I was surprised that remained in the final movie because it's so fucking weird. Yeah. It's the point in the book where you're just like, wait, this, this person she was seeing the whole time is actually real? And he's going to jail, and she's going to the courtroom. What the fuck just happened? Yeah, in this yeah, book? yeah, exactly. Because the entire time he's like a, he's just like a phantom. He's a specter. And to be fair to King, even in the movie, that moment almost like derails the film <laughs> because there's this whole segment where she gets free and she has this whole voiceover about tracking down that guy, 
And that whole voiceover was probably the one point in the movie where I'm like, this feels clunky. Yeah. Um, everything else felt like it ran smoothly, but that voiceover just felt like a Band-Aid on a problem. Yeah, the, the problem <laughs> being, like, we have to actually have her get to the end. Mm-hmm. But she needs to get there, but how the fuck do we get her there? Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. You know? Um, and... And it still feels weird and off the rails, but I actually do think it still works. Yeah, well, they got the guy who played, like, Lurch in the Addams Family movies oh, God, to play yeah. Mr. Moonlight. And he's fantastic. Yeah. He's great. He's fucking great. He's awesome. And the makeup they put on him is phenomenal. Yeah. And I, lo- and I love, I love, like I said, that final line all of a sudden. All of a sudden, that final line makes his inclusion in the story perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just another man monster myth thing that is stuck in her head that that won't let her go. Yeah. And now she has to finally confront it. She couldn't confront her husband, she couldn't confront her dad, but she can f- confront this guy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And now put the beast to rest and now it's going to jail. Like it's like Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really weird. Like that ending is really odd and like another king book that has that type of ending. That you're like, it's not even an unsatisfying ending. It's just, you're like, how do you put that on the screen and not be stupid? Is the end of Needful Things. Oh, yeah, fair enough. The end of Needful Things where the entire time the main character is doing these the sleight of hand magician tricks. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, he has magical powers, which yeah. he fights Mr. Gaunt with. Yeah. And you're just sort of like, I don't know how you're going to pull that off in a movie. And the movie didn't. They were like, no, we're going to do something else. <laughs> yeah, they had to come up with a conclusion. Like, yeah. It was kind of like every time you try to do it, and you're like, you got to make that spider look good if you're going to do it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. If you're going to do it. Yeah. If you're going to do it, it has to be flawless. <laughs> so most of the time, they don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like it, it, the inherent hilarity of when you break it down, da- the second act of it down was actually done in Animaniacs where you have Dr. Scratch and Sniff going, a clown is not, a clown is not an enemy. It is not going to bite me and throw me in the basement. <laughs> a clown is not a big spider. <laughs> and the minute he said that, I was like, oh, you're making fun of Stephen King's it. Okay, yeah, got yeah. it. You know, because that's what happens. <laughs> that being said, if they were to do it well, Oh, yeah, awesome. if they do it well. If there's a giant spider in the third act of that movie and it rules. I'm still looking forward to it, too. We'll see what happens. It's coming 2019. I'm excited. Okay. I'm excited. All right. Because I like the, the last one. Anyway, yeah, uh, now we're great. talking about another Stephen King adaptation that was really good this year. Well, God damn it. How, it's so hard to do that because all this, most, so many of the Stephen King books exist in, a sim, in the same universe. I think he's kicking, kicking ass this year. Oh, yeah. I know a lot of people didn't like Dark Tower, but I kind of liked Dark Tower. Well, but a, it was phenomenal. Oh, it was amazing. And Dark Tower, in my opinion, at the very least, was decent. Yeah. You know, like, it wasn't... It, it, worst... it was a pure popcorn movie. Yeah. Which yeah. may not be what people want out of the Dark Tower books, but it it, it was at least well, what, a good one. What were you going to do? They're essentially kids' books with an adult edge. Yeah, yeah. You know, and when you get right down to it, I am okay with what they did. Yeah. However, and, and 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 sorry, what I meant to say was Dark Tower is certainly no dream catcher. Yes. That being said, like if you're a King Faithful, then this book is oh. very faithful. This movie is very faithful. Like you're yeah. not going to have that problem with this one. Um, like I certainly wasn't, didn't have a problem with any of the changes. In fact, most of them I sat there and went like, actually that's, that's more effective. So rock on, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, to be fair, there's a lot of stuff I didn't quite remember. Cause I haven't read Jill, Gerald's game since like early two thousands. Yeah. And I yeah, was going I read through my 90s. initial King phase and I was watching those nineties books, like the, reading those nineties books, like Dolores Claiborne, Insomnia and, um, Gerald's game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Insomnia, if they did that one. Insomnia is a movie... Okay, I want an adaptation of Insomnia that fixes the second half. Yes. Like, I mm-hmm. want I want you someone to do a phenomenal version of that first half and give it an ending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the funny thing is, is I actually am thinking about it, and I'm like, you know, that second half of Insomnia, actually, that might work better as a movie. It actually could. It could. Like, yeah. There are aspects of Gerald's game that I felt like worked better as a movie. Oh, yeah. You know? The contained scenario was really fucking effective in that way. Like, just fucking her trying to drink that glass of water. Holy shit. Yeah. I'm like, that is the most intense thing I've seen all year. And I've seen a lot of intense things this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they do that scene, like, a couple of times. Yeah. Just... You know, because like, oh, is she going to drop it this time? And then you, you know? get to that moment where she actually gets the thing. And, like, like the, the, the her husband 
and the, her husband hallucination is smiling at her. Why is he smiling? And she goes, try to drink it, and she can't reach it. Yeah. And that's when she has to make a straw, like, out of her yeah, tag. Yeah, she has to make a straw out of a dress tag in yes. order to drink like, it. Oh, my like, God. God. Damn. That scene, like, oh, my God. That's, like, like top ten, like, edgier seat moments of the year. Not necessarily the scariest, but definitely, like, the most butt It was really tense, yeah. Anyway, uh, Gerald's Game. Fully recommend. This movie is fucking phenomenal. Probably going to be a top ten list movie for me. I loved it. And uh, uh, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And one last thing. I've been recently playing a whole lot of video games on my Twitch channel. So if you would like to subs not subscribe, follow my Twitch channel. I will link that in the description below in lieu of an Amazon affiliate link. So check that out. Follow me on Twitch and uh, uh, watch me play some games as I have been all this last week. And with that all said, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.